congruency example for B. Now, in part B, they asked me to show that triangle ADF is congruent to triangle CDE. So now let's look, take a look at the different triangles that we have. So I want ADF, okay? And at the same time, I want the other triangle um, CDE. C, D, and E. So now what do we observe? We observe that when we draw these two triangles, right, there is a portion that actually overlap with each other. And in fact, I actually have an angle that is common and it overlaps with each other. So number one, I already know that in these two triangles, I have a angle, I have one angle information already. Okay, so I've got one angle. Then now uh, we are short of other information, right? So let's take a look at what we have previously. I already know that triangle AEB is congruent to triangle CFB. So in this triangle, here, these two triangles previously that I've shown, I can see that, oh, triangle here, this angle C, and this angle A are actually equals to each other. So I got one more angle already. That leaves me in all of my property. I will have either SSS, SAS, AAS, or RHS property. Notice that in now in this case, I'm using the AAS property because it just need any two angle one side. So most probably I'm going to look for the third side. Now what other sides do I, can I have? I know that AE is equals to BE. Let's take a look. Huh? I know that AE uh, but AE is not inside the triangle, not part of the, it's outside the red color triangle. Okay, and I can maybe have another one. AB. AB is on this triangle, the blue one. And FB is also on the triangle. And AB is equals to the side. Uh, B, C, and B, F is equals to B, E, because uh, it's congruent. So I already have another side that is made up of these two different parts. So what I can do now is I'm going to use the A, A, S property. Let's say I'm not very sure how to go about doing it, but it's okay. I will start by labeling my points. A, D, F. So A will match with point D. No, point C, sorry. And D is an overlap, overlapping point, common point. So D with D. And last but not least, the point F will match with E. So part B in triangle ADF and triangle CDE. Let us write down what we have first. Our first angle, the one in red, is angle D. So angle ADF is evil equals to C, D, E. And what's the reason? Because it is overlapping, right? So this is called a common angle. Okay. Let's look for the second point, second angle. So just now I know that this angle over here uh, angle C and angle A are equal because uh, of congruent triangle shown in part A. So what I can do now, I'm going to write 
uh, angle A and C. Angle A, that will be angle D, A, F, using the angles over here. And it will be equals to, if it's D, A, F, I will have the matching angle D, C, E. How do I know that they are equal? Because it was shown that it's congruent triangle in part A. So shown in part A. Now let us take a look at our third side. Our third side, we were talking about this uh, area over here, right? This length, this portion over here. I have this green one, B, A, and F, A, B, F. So these two sides actually made up the length A, F. So A, F is made up of A, B plus B, F. But because I know that they are congruent triangles in part A, the triangles are over here, AB is the same as C to B. And I know that B to F is the same as B to E. So I'm going to change it to B to E. That gives me C to B, B to E, which is actually C, E. And this one, I don't need to write the reason because this means uh, congruent triangles shown in part A. So now I have a angle, angle, and one side. So therefore, I can conclude that triangle ADF is congruent to triangle CDE by the AAS property.